One. Hello everyone, welcome to part 4 of our best of the 2010s decade here. We've already covered movies, we've covered TV shows, we've covered the best songs of the decade, and then finally we're going to talk about the best comic series or events of the decade, uh, because we are a comic book store, and uh, and we want to talk about comics. So Juan says he knows me, he says he knows my uh, vanilla ass, so come on, what do you think? Before, right. I, before I even get into it, name, right. a, name, a, name, name a couple you think will be there. Batman Court of Owls. Okay. Uh, Secret Wars. Okay. You and you know what? You're not gonna have House and Powers of X because you're such a douche. I don't know what what else was good this that that you would like. I don't know what Green Lantern or Flash book you're gonna love. Is that it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, you, the Captain America turns evil one. That's Secret it. Empire. Yeah, Secret Empire is gonna be on there. Okay. There you go. Is that all you got? Yeah. Is that all you got? Okay. Juan's going to talk about Oblivion song. He's going to talk about. Uh, nope. He's going to talk about. Uh, um, what else? What else was really big? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Witches, trees. I, nope, I don't know. Nope, uh, 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 I don't know. So what's your number ten? I don't know. They're all going to be like image books. There's nothing from DC. Nothing from DC. Nothing from DC. <laughs> Whatever, dude. And three, three things from Marvel actually. So All right, are you in order? Two. Yeah, I actually put it in order. I'm, I'm not in order. I'm not in order. But here we go. So, uh, uh, the first one that I said was a uh, Superior Spider-Man from Dan Slott came out in 2013. Uh, everyone likes Spider-Man. You know, it's one of the top-selling books still to this day, next to Batman. Uh, and uh, let me tell you what, uh, I thought putting uh. Doc Ock's consciousness inside Spider-Man was like stupid, but after reading it, I'm like, this is one of the best Spider-Man books I've ever read, and it's only what thirty issues long, something like that. Thirty, uh, thirty something. And every issue is really good. It's really good, and it sold really well. And uh, since then, the tie-ins were all great too. Tie-ins, yeah, everything, everything was really good, uh, and. Uh, it was just great. I, I was kind of disappointed when they brought Peter back, to be honest. I, I really wanted to see how much farther they were going to take it. Uh, and instead, Dan Slott fucked up and turned Peter Parker into Marvel's version of Tony Stark with Parker Industries and a bunch of other bullshit. But prior to that, uh, Superior Spider-Man, hands down, one of the best comic series events of 2010s. You? My number 10 is Afterlife with Archie. Started in 2013. I don't you, know. If you it's did like that. No, it was really good. Yeah. It was the beginning of the the Archie horror comics. Right? Yes, that yeah. Was the first one, right? Uh, to that point, Archie was a, a dead brand, basically. Yeah. Um, but then they did Afterlife with Archie, which is basically there's a zombie apocalypse in Riverdale. Yeah. Right. And uh, starting with Jughead, starting right? Starting with Jughead. Yeah. And uh, it's a it's about the the town and how they deal with the zombie apocalypse with all our favorite Archie characters and. Uh, it's fantastic. It it actually uh, reinvigorated Archie comics. They then let went to Sabrina and did the horror Sabrina. Yeah. And now we see it crossed over into television with the success of Riverdale and Sabrina. The Sabrina Teenage, Teenage Witch, Witch, yeah. Teenage Witch being a fucking insanely dark show. Uh, the girl who plays Sabrina very pretty too. That show is insane, yeah. right? And I've heard the uh, Riverdale's like a nine hundred two one zero type of deal. I'm guessing. So you know what? Um, after like with Archie. Ah, uh, nice. We okay with it? Yeah. Okay. Gasper. You had a question? Oh. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, Secret Wars from Hickman, twenty fifteen. Oh, you don't say. You didn't like Secret Wars. I love Secret Wars. Secret Wars was amazing. It basically took everything we know about the Marvel Universe multiverse, combined it all into one, and divided all the lands up into different things. Whether it was the uh, Zom Marvel Zombies, Age of Ultron, Age of Apocalypse, all the big events in Marvel's history all basically had their own little land. The Armor Wars, the the it, 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 it just I, divided by Marvel Zombies, which was a really cool idea, right? Well, the Marvel Zombies were outside the wall, like, like outside yeah. with the Ultron bots, yeah. and then the Shield. Mm -hmm. Have a good day, man. The Shield was your wall, you know, which which really made like. 
Really good, really good. And the Red Skull tie-in, which was a which was a uh, four-part series as well. How he was banished by Doom. I mean, because if, Red Skull was only that was the real threat to Doom. And if, if you include, so if I were to include, and the reason it didn't make my list, right? Because even though I like the event, if you include that Avengers and the new Avengers run leading into Secret War, it would I be. I don't. Probably my number one of all time because the Avengers. I don't that, include it though. You don't need. You don't need that. But that you don't need okay, that don't, to go to that. Well, I agree that the Avengers wasn't as necessary. That new Avengers run was not as necessary though. Basically, Secret War starts out in basically an alternate reality, an alternate universe. You are on a world that is nothing but like you are anything not we know. Understanding how you, how you got to that right, point. How you got to that point. You will not understand. Doesn't matter. You don't need to. You don't need to to read that book. But it, it gives you a more complete. Yes, experience. yeah. It's like the dir director's cut. And whatever. Plus, hold on, hold on. Like that new Avengers run had some awesome fucking moments. Absolutely. The Illuminati, like absolutely. Captain America realized yes. that they wiped his memory, and then they banish him. The, yeah, yeah. The Namor, yeah. Black Panther. Yes. You had the the Cabal, like the Thanos. Yes. There, the evil yes. Illuminati. Yes. Like, a ton of cool shit. Yes. Really good. Really, they destroyed the Infinity Gems, all had that, that stuff. Shit on my fucking list. Um, really good, but but you don't need it. I think I think what was happening in Avengers and New Avengers is independent of Secret Wars. Uh, it's its own thing together. And Hickman kind of fucked up, I think, too, because the Infinity story, the one that was around Thanos, which came up before Secret Wars, you they they made you think it was gonna have something to do with to what was and going on in Avengers and Avengers and then and then they oversaturated they us. They have that cool moment with they, Thor where he threw his hammer, and they're like kneel and he like kneeled, but he had thrown his hammer like fucking forever before, and then all of a sudden the hammer like comes through the dude. Remember? I don't remember that. No, I don't remember that. But they remember Avengers World and Avengers Undercover and yeah, Avengers. It was just like it was too much Avengers. Well, yeah, I think after a Secret Wars when Hickman leaves, everything went to shit because. That's when they were trying to push like the A Force book and a lot of like the fallout from that, the old man Logan and, works not. And, and A Force was great in in Secret Wars, not mm -hmm. good outside no, of Secret Wars. No. Old Man Logan has always been good. Yeah, sure. No, it really has. No, I mean, believe Old I mean, Man Logan has well, always been good. Your shit, the old man Hawkeye quilt. Old man, old man, whatever. Yeah. Alright, so my number nine, I'm gonna call an audible. Go for it. I had sex criminals, but I'm replacing it with a new Avengers run. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I didn't. You, dude, hey, hard to dude, listen, dude. Anything that replaces an indie book with with, with Marvel DC, I'm game for. It, Go for it, it. Yeah. It it just I remember now like just how impressive that new Avengers run was, right? Because it was written again. It was written by Hickman first of all, who's technically an indie. He writes indies, right? Responsible for like two more things on my list. I mean, he writes indies, but he but 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 his but, his career is 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 uh, is made Marvel, from right. from Marvel. From Marvel, right? That's that's what he that's what everyone knows yeah. him from, you know. But um, he wouldn't have his indie success without I, his Marvel success. I think success. that the new Avengers, basically, the new Avengers story starts. We meet the character Black Swan, which I thought was an awesome fucking character. By mm -hmm. And uh, basically, what's happening is that the the universes are starting to collide. Yes. Right, and so it's destroying universes. So the Illuminati. Uh, get together, which is a, a group uh, represented by different characters from the Marvel Universe, right, on how to solve this problem, right? And the way they solve this problem is by extinguishing the universes before they collapse on themselves. Leaning also, which, by the way, this is one of the ending of one of, I believe, your favorite universes, the Ultimate Universe. And yeah. Because of of Hickman's run on New Avengers yeah. uh, and Secret Wars. So Unfortunately, yeah. It, it actually had repercussions into the Marvel universe we can think well it was the, it was Marvel's attempt at a reboot sure which they I think they failed at they did Marvel now which happened afterwards was just like garbage yeah yeah so uh, I and, and again I already mentioned the cool moments earlier about that and again it leads into Secret Wars which is awesome uh, doom is also it's just a great character um, it brings Miles Morales basically in, into our in, into our universe and unnecessary and and, and well you know you, unexplained too I just yeah. I don't like it. I don't I'm like with it. You, but if you were and and I, I Bendis's run Spider Man Two, which was the miniseries, which which said, well, if you brought Miles from the Ultimate Universe here, where's the Miles Morales of this universe? Mm -hmm. And it addressed that. It was actually really good. Yeah, so and the ending of that brought the Ultimate Universe actually back. But anyways, and, and, and so again, because it ended with Secret Wars, it was a, from start to end a complete story. It was awesome, and I think the promise payoff, which was Secret War, delivered. On what new Avengers led into, I think Avengers, the other half of that book was weaker because it was dealing with some cosmic stuff, the creators and all that. Which, which was, that was Hickman too. It, it was Hickman, but it, it, to me, it wasn't as strong. 
Yeah. As a new Avengers run. Yeah. Uh, I mean, since you brought up uh, that, I had new Avengers Hickman 2013 on there as well. So I, I don't need to talk more about it because we just talked about it. It's amazing, guys. You need to definitely get it. Go. All right, my number eight is Manhattan Projects. Okay. Manhattan Projects was written by Hickman. It, it deals with um, actual characters and basically uh, them hiding the fact. Actual, that as in like real, real life, life his, like historical Hickman figures. Hickman, okay. Historical figures. Okay. Uh, and uh, and them conducting science, like just crazy science experiments. Is um, this post atomic bomb? The Manhattan Project was atomic bomb. I know, but I'm saying you're saying crazy science experiments, like outside of building the atomic, atomic bomb. bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They okay. they deal with like alien invasion, okay, like fucking robot, not yeah. parallel universes, all that. So, it was it's a really really weird story, not for everyone, but uh, I I think it's 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 probably the most out there book I put on here. Okay, um, I have uh, Injustice, Tom Taylor, 2013. That's actually, that's actually really good. Book. Uh, and holy shit, man. Injustice might be my favorite thing I've ever fucking read. Based on a video game, oddly enough, because sure. most books, not most, all, based on video games, and I think we could say TV shows and movies too, just are not good. No. You know, they do a really bad job at, 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 at really banging that out properly. But holy shit, Tom Taylor does not hold back. You see the most craziest what the fuck moments in this book that you will ever see in any Marvel or DC book. And um <coughs> it was just it's amazing. They I mean from book 1. From book right away, right away right the gate. And there was there was a 2 year run when Tom Taylor wasn't on it. I forget who the writer was. It was still good, not as good. I mean, but still good. Uh, but Tom Taylor came back and he really, uh, he really reeled it back in. And and fuck, man. What that's I appreciate amazing. about Injustice is like when you say they didn't hold back. I don't think people understand that haven't read it. Like comics, they do like crazy stuff, right? But crazy stuff within, I don't know. There's certain constraints, anyways, right? But in Injustice, like for instance, when I think Guy Gardner was flying back to Earth. He's like, well, you can't do anything to me as long as I have the ring. And he's like, and and Sinestro's like, all right, rips off his fucking finger. And he dies right like, there. Just rips off his finger. Yeah. And the guy just space like, and then you have the threats from like Superman, where where basically uh, Aquaman doesn't know who to join. He's like, all right, cool. He grabs Atlantis and they dump it in the Sahara Desert. Yeah. Like, it's insane. I mean, just and Superman actually punches a hole through Joker's heart. Punches a hole through Joker's through heart because chest. because the Joker tricks Superman Into with killing- Scarecrow's. Fear toxin along with kryptonite, th- and makes him think that that Doomsday is the attack. So Superman beats the crap out of Doomsday and kills him. And then when the toxin wears off, he really he, he, I, it, it was Lois Lane who was holding who was his pregnant. unborn child. And all the while that was happening, Joker blew up Metropolis with an atomic bomb. Right. So this is all in the, like the, yeah, first, in the issue. first issue. Joker, like so. Joker I'm, I'm not Superman spoiling anything. To kill. Lois Lane and his unborn child. Superman flies down. Batman realizes what's going on too late. Tries to stop him, and Superman's like, "No!" Punches a hole through fucking Joker's chest. And Superman's like, "I'm never gonna let this happen again to anybody. I'm going to bring order to the planet." And he does, but he does so by inducing fear. Superman's best story are all else worlds. No, that's not true. He's got some good ones. Like Red Sun, those are good, Kingdom but Kong. but he's got he's got good ones in, like, in continuity. Right, also. Anyways, Injustice is amazing. My number seven is Happy. It's the book that got. It's a comic that made me actually like comic books. Which, if you watch part three about TV shows, Happy is also it's, it's, and it's, on it's, his it's top just ten. The same, uh, unlike the TV show, it ends with just the, the miniseries. They never did another Happy. Um, it differs from the show enough that you should read it. Uh, the ending of the comic is a lot more thoughtful yep. than the TV show is. Okay. So. Uh, my next one is Earth 2 from Tom Taylor, 2013. Holy shit. Tom, was really good. Tom Taylor, like, basically, okay, so in the DC universe proper, okay, Darkseid comes to us and the Justice League defeats him and Apocalypse doesn't come and reign terror on Earth. In Earth 2, it's like, well, what if he won? Sure. And it's just like, what... Again, like, oh my god, what the fuck moments. And they, and the Justice Society is really the main characters because the Trinity, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman, die in the first issue. Mm-hmm. 
You know, which wasn't written by Tom Taylor. It was written by someone else. I forget who it was. Tom Taylor took over, at, I think, at issue seven. It's where we're introduced to the new Superman, Zol El, I think his name, with the first black Superman. So, but we're also introduced to Thomas Wayne as the older Batman. Uh, and it's just... Which is still having an impact today. Yes. And it's just holy fucking shit, man. Like, really, really good. Definitely worth the read. Or two. Nah. Uh, I agree with him. I'm, uh... My number six is The Vision, which is uh, the first time I... Uh, Tom King, right? Tom King. Yeah. The Vision is basically... So this is how fucking crazy this book is. Did you ever read it? No. Okay. Because if this is what they base that TV show on, it's going to be insane. So The Vision has his memory kind of like white. His humanity is white. So he wants to regain his humanity, and he believes the best way of doing this is by creating a family. Right? So he creates a wife and two kids. Right? Um... And, and, and believing that that's going to lead him to, to regain his humanity. At the same time, so vi- his wife, um, so you know that Vision has a brother, right? That was created by Ultron. I, I forget his name, right? Yeah. Uh, and he breaks into the house, and he's going he's gonna to kill the, the kid, and his wife kills him. But his robot wife is so afraid of being taken away that she buries him in the backyard. Well, the neighbor filmed it. The neighbor sends him a message, so she goes to meet the neighbor, and the neighbor's like, "Listen, if you know, I'm gonna release this if you don't move out of the neighborhood because people don't want this weird android family living there." So the guy goes to shoot her, but you know the vision could phase, so she phases through the bullet as that neighbor's son is walking in, and it kills his son, and then so she's still trying to deal with all this shit. So it, it's it's what you like about Tom King's run on Batman is everything the vision was about what makes us human how would we react like androids like this android does she get feelings and it's it's insane you should read it I think you went to Eisner for that too yeah yeah, which is like the Oscar equivalent Tom in comic King, book world. Uh, I don't like Batman, and I also think Mr. Miracle gets an honorable mention from him. I think he's just really good, but he should stick to minor characters. Mm. Or he can explore those issues, right? Because most people, like, as interesting as you might find it, the, the, the dynamic between Catwoman and Batman and what he's doing with that, most people don't go to a Batman book for that. But if you take Mr. Miracle or you take The Vision and you create a story like that... I think it was Mr. Think Miracle that he won. Mr. Mr. Miracle won, he won the, the award. Yeah. So, the vision. All right. Um, I have uh, Uncanny Avengers from Rick Remender 2012. Do you remember this? Have a good day, guys. Take care. Uncanny Avengers. No, I do not remember. What it's, happens? It's with ha- Havoc and Rogue and Kane, Kang the con- Conqueror. And, and, and Red Skull is the, is the bad guy, is too. He, uh, if they go to the future. Ca- takes Professor X's brain? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that was weird. You liked that? And, but Kang the Conqueror was the bad guy. Yeah, I remember And, and Havoc was yeah, the leader. I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, uh, it involved in some... Se- se- guys, I love so- stories about the future. I love alternate realities. I love time travel, all that stuff like that. Uncanny Avengers by Rick Remender is filled with all of that. It, 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 uh, the Apocalypse Twins, remember? Apocalypse yeah, is no, in no, it too. I remember, I remember the story. I remember the whole thing. Really good. It was really good. Really good, guys. And out of out of at a time when we were oversaturated with many different Avengers books, the Uncanny Avengers came post X Men versus Avengers, and uh, it was it was really good. It was a combination of both X Men and Avengers in a single team, and uh, it's the first time I really got into Kang the Conqueror. I wasn't a big fan about yeah. prior to, but great, really great. My uh, my number uh, my number five is uh, Thor. 2012, 2019, the Jason Aaron run. Now I need to make I need to clarify. This. Not the Straczynski run. No. With Lady Loki. No no, no, Loki. No, 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 God, no. Okay. I need to make some really clear. I hate most of Jason Aaron's Thor. I'm specifically talking about issues one through twelve. When the story of the God Butcher, the story of the God Butcher, I think the trades are called God Butcher and God Bomb. If you guys are looking to get that, War of Realms um, was so disappointing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It was gone. Cool. Yeah. Um, can't believe I, read I don't that. like Thor as a character, and the story of God Butcher and God Bomb is one of my favorite comic stories of all time. Just those issues. It was really compelling. It was Jason Aaron at his best and probably at his most indie, right? Because Jason Aaron has a ton of like good indie books, like uh, Southern Bastards is fantastic. The Goddamned is fantastic. So uh, I really love that run of Thor, which is crazy to me because, again, I hate Thor. I hate all of that. 
all of it. I hate Thor, and uh, he made me like really love his Thor story. I'm not a Thor fan at all yeah. either. I don't like magic. I don't like any of that stuff. I did reach Trzinski's run of Thor, which actually was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not read Jason Aaron's run. I, I, I read War of Realms, which I did not like at all. Um, and I don't like how they've turned Thor into a doofy Joker like Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, I, I think that's awful. I mean, they did it to Aquaman as well, right? Like, lately, yeah. Um, um, dude, I'm with you. I, I, <clears throat> I wish that these comic, com, comic book companies like Marvel would just keep their shit separate, right? I just don't like 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 Norse gods and like mythology in like my Avengers world. I don't want Spider Man like swinging by fucking Ragnar. Like, you know what I mean? Like. And mm-hmm. it just to me it, it it leaves a bad mix, right? I like my X Men separate, my Avengers separate, my cosmic si- like you know, yeah. they, you know they usually keep like Doctor Strange and and Mephisto, all that stuff. Like I like that. Like I don't want it to mix. I think that and and Thor is just to me the most obnoxious mix, right? It, it, like I don't want yes. elves. I don't want Avengers fighting elves. Yeah, it, it reminds me of when Bendis put Spider Man in everything. Yeah, and Wolverine, and I'm like God. Keep the Wolverine with the X Men. Keep the Spider Man and the Spider Man. I don't need to mix it. No. Yeah. You know? Uh, all right. So, uh, my next thing is uh, Justice League from Jeff Johns, 2011, launched the New 52 with Jim Lee. And holy shit. First of all, when New 52 launched, you, were, you weren't really into comics yet, but, but uh, really good, really popular. And Justice League was so. Good. It basically was a retelling of their origin. Jim Lee's art was phenomenal. There's no arguing Jeff Johns and everything he does. And uh, his whole run on Justice League was amazing. He, he gave us uh, uh, the Injustice League as well, uh, which was uh, uh, what was what was the name of that 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 series with Ultraman and and Lois Lane was the the yeah, bad. I don't I don't remember, but yeah. Uh, Forever Evil. Forever Evil. Forever Evil. The Dark Side War. All that stuff. Like. Mm-hmm. Really good. If you like DC characters, if you like the Trinity, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, if you like the Justice League, definitely Jeff Johns' run on Justice League is worth your time. I mean, New 52 in general was just better than than Rebirth, at least. Rebirth is a continuation of New 52. It's yeah, not you, different. I, 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 yeah. There was so much more I liked. Um, my number four is, is Fatal. Uh, that's a book written by Brew Baker. It's, it's about <clears> this woman that men are like attracted. It's, it's, it's a fatal attraction type of deal. Um, it, it's a noir story, um, it, so it's a genre that I really like. Um, it ends up introducing supernatural elements out of nowhere that threw me for a loop. Oof, and that's, I wouldn't, that's I wouldn't what like I really it. liked okay. about it. Um, it. It takes place over time through like decades. It's it's just an all around awesome book. The the debates between criminal and fatal, but um, I personally preferred fatal. Okay. Um, Flashpoint 2011 from Jeff Johns. Uh, again, really good. All the tie-ins were great. Uh, basically, uh, and this is what launched the New 52. It was really a big deal for DC Comics. It really turned everything that everyone knew about DC and flipped it upside down and rebooted. A, a real reboot. Like, not even like a half-assed one. A real fucking reboot. Everything started from scratch again. And origins were retold. It was really good. All from the events of Flashpoint. Flashpoint is the only comic book that actually made me teary-eyed. The uh, spoilers: the moment at the end when when uh, Flash gives his father's letter, uh, Batman's father's letter to Bruce, and Bruce kind of like you know gets emotional. You don't see Bruce get emotional first of all, but it was really like a, a good father-son moment. You could tell that Bruce missed his dad, and. Uh, I kind of hate Tom King right now for making ruining that moment, as well as Jeff Johns for destroying that letter in um, in uh, what in Rebirth. The button and the button. Thank you, the button. Um, but uh, Flashpoint's amazing. All the tie-ins are amazing. Really great. Uh, I'm gonna call an audible. My number three was Black Science. I'm gonna scratch Black Science and add Flashpoint. Ah, you were talking shit about Flash. Oh you were talking shit about the Flash. And there you add the Flash. Flashpoint's just really, it's, it's really well done on multiple levels. Yes, the art's Flash. great, the, and, the, and the like, story's and, great. And, and this is what the, the cool thing about Flashpoint is, um, it's just really human, right? We understand all the decisions that these characters make. Yes. So by understanding, like, we would all want to save our mom, right? Yeah. So, like, by understanding those decisions and seeing the consequences, it kind of, like, 
helps us understand uh, a little bit as a reader. It really puts into perspective the sacrifice that these characters are making, you know, for, for that. So, yeah, I'm with you. It was emotional. Haha. <laughs> And all the tie-ins are really good too, and, they're, the and they're, I would I would read all the tie-ins if I was if I was if you guys are watching this and you take something from Flashpoint, invest in reading all the tie-ins and rest of the time it's all a well-rounded great one of DC's best events. Agreed. Hands well, in. I would actually and and by taking out Black Science and putting number three, I do believe that Flashpoint is better than everything else I have under it. So it's an actual number three. Oh, wow! Wow! Kudos, Jeff Johns. Uh, hi, how are you doing? Uh, Next one, Age of Ultron, uh, Brian Bendis. I was going to say that because I hate that book. 2013. I can't, I can't. 2013. Listen, guys, first of all, this book has nothing to do with the movie Age of Ultron. All they did was they took the name. Mm -hmm. And basically, listen, this is what the movie should have been, first of all. Wolverine was the main character in Age of Ultron, just to be clear here. It was not uh, the Avengers. Uh, and it's it's Wolverine got sent back in time to stop Ultron from being created by Hank Pym because Ultron eventually takes over the world and Skynet's the fuck out of it. You know, it's it's literally like Terminator Judgment Day but in the Marvel Universe. And really well done. Again, another time travel alternate reality storyline. Uh, Brian Bendis, whether you love him or hate him, you cannot deny his impact in Marvel Comics. And Age of Ultron is one of his best, I believe. And uh, it's definitely... Definitely a good read. It's standalone. You don't need to read anything to go along with it. Uh, it starts on its own, ends on its own. Uh, my number two is East of West. You do um, like that book. I should have said that. How did I fuck that up? Yeah. Yeah, how can I help you? Oh, okay. I'll be right there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, East of West. Uh, we'll, we'll pause. We'll pause. Yeah, sure. You got two left. Pause. Okay, we're back, guys. You, what was your number two again? My number two was East of West. East of West, yeah. East of West, Hickman, Go on. it's uh, post-apocalyptic. It has a lot of Christian eschatology in, in it. Um, uh, his own take on it is basically the four... It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a future, dystopian future, alternate reality, um, and basically the four horsemen of the apocalypse are reborn. Three of them are reborn, and they're searching out death because they need him to start the apocalypse, but he doesn't want to for reasons that are later explained in the book. It's, it's really... It's done as a Western, and it's just... Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's still going on. It's still ongoing. Is he it's ending, it's is, is he still writing it? Yes, and it's ending. Okay. His ex duties are taking too much time? I guess. Yeah. I mean, he is spearheading that whole thing. Almost made my list, by the way. What, the House and Powers? House and Powers. Ugh, okay. Uh, I think that Hickman is, is one of the... I mean, I don't know if you agree with me, but when it comes to the events at Marvel, Hickman, to me, has the best track record. I mean, look, if I got to go with the top writers, I mean, Hickman's one of them, Jeff Johns, no, Tom no, Tom yeah. Taylor, but, Brian Bendis. But if you're in straight Marvel and you want someone to handle your major event, to me, it's Hickman, dude. Bendis did a good job, too. Sure. Mark Miller. Uh, Mark uh, Miller, too. Oh, so, What's your number two? Mark Miller, Civil War, Old Man yeah, Logan. No, no. Yeah, Mark Miller. No, no. Yeah. Uh, I already said my It was Age of Ultron, remember? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on my last one. Go ahead. Uh... Thanos wins. Donny Cates. 2018. Shut. I know. Fuck. You didn't expect that. You didn't Fuck. see that coming, did you? No. Yeah. Holy shit. It was so good. It was so good. Listen, I heard about Donny Cates. It was like, oh my God, Donny Cates is so good, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, uh, and then, you know, like we had him here at the store earlier this year. Fortunately, that was a great thing. And I made a point to read his books. Uh, so I get a feel for like what this guy does. And now, I, be before Thanos wins, he had been doing, uh, he was on Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange, which was okay. Yeah. I don't like nothing, magic. I don't like magic. So, but, yeah. but it was nothing like insane. I, I didn't read it. So I couldn't say, yeah. Uh, but damnation, he was, a, he was a part of that. Yeah. I know. But, uh, Holy shit, Thanos wins was like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? It introduced us to Cosmic Ghost Rider. Yes. More popular characters going right now, and there's a new series coming out this week. I like Cosmic Ghost Rider. I don't like that it's Frank Castle, but I like I like Cosmic the Ghost concept. Rider. Um, yeah. Um, but holy, just really, really good. Basically, Thanos versus Thanos at the end of the day. At the end of the to, to to still appeal to death, which is like, you know throwback to infinity gauntlet the fact that he had the hulk in like a cage basically and fed the heroes to him and then the silver surfer comes to kick his ass and took forever because 
guess what? He's fucking Thor. I was just like, <laughs> mm-hmm. really good, really good. Thanos was is really, really fantastic. Um, it is the best thing Donny Case has done. Donny Case. You think it's the best thing he's done? Yeah, he's still doing good things. I still like Venom. Um, yeah, it's weaker in it. It's weaker now than it was when it began. Uh, I know that you don't like the the no. I don't, but I, but I, but that's because I like Brian Bennis's Venom imp- uh, uh, take better. I like the fact that it's a manufactured human thing. It's more grounded in reality. I, I don't like Venom being from a space planet of symbiotes. I don't like. I, I, I Donny Cage, and that's not Donnie's fault. Yeah, uh, yeah. His his Guardians of the Galaxy, which is ending his run on that too, has been really really uh, good. Has been good. Good. Yeah. Uh, he does really well, especially when taking the. They basically put him on a bunch, other than Doctor Strange, a bunch of no-name characters or, or like, B-C-level characters, and he's made them really interesting and unique. Uh, I think that uh, Donny Case next book is Thor, Thor, and from some of the pages that I've seen, looks it good. looks nuts. Yeah, like, like... Hyper-violent. I saw brains on, yeah, on the hammer. Hyper-violent insanity, yeah. so yeah. I'm excited for it. Thanos, uh, Thanos wins, though, but, it's, like... It's, yeah. It's a must-read. Yeah. yeah. Um, my number one, I... You, which should obviously know, and you would probably know. It's once I say it, you'll know it's Saga. Ah, yes, that's it's right. Saga. Stupid me. Fuck. How did I saga fuck that from up? Brian K. Vaughn. Yeah. Um, and Fiona Staples. Which is over or on hiatus? Hiatus. Okay. Brian K. Vaughn of Why the Last Man status. Why the Last Man. Yeah. Uh, he actually Brian K. Vaughn wrote a book. I don't know. Was it you that recommended it to me? Um, no. He, the, the Agents of or the Shield. Wasn't me. Where he did Shield back, and that Shield was started by Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. And wasn't oh, me. Amazing. Yeah. But you know what's weird is that they try to bring it back, right? Like that was last year, right? They tried to back and end it. I I don't remember. I didn't I didn't pay attention. So to um, it. he does uh, so basically Saga. I mean, at the end of the day, it's Romeo and Juliet, and uh, mixed in with Star Wars is all that Saga really. It's it's deeper than that, but that's what the basic storyline is. Uh, a lot of cool stories. The world building is insane, and I think that the success of the book is because of the collaboration between Brian K. Vaughn and and Staples is so strong to the point where you know, like, uh, you obviously know, but you own the store and you you do orders. Uh, there's been multiple hiatuses. Yeah. Uh, throughout the time of uh, Saga, do you know why? Why? Uh, Brian K. Vaughn refuses to work with any other artist on that book. So whenever Staples is doing something else, they put the book on hold. Or whenever Brian K. Vaughn has to do something else, they put the book on hold because they want to keep the consistency of the book. The book is really, really good. I recommend it. When people come in and they want to read an indie, uh, that's one of the ones that I recommend. It it gets a lot. It's gotten a lot of people in the comics. Yeah. As you know, at one point it was one of our you know top five selling books. It was. Yeah. And uh, and and just Brian K. Vaughn. I mean, you read you love Why the Last Man. The guy's a really, really, really yeah. good writer. And I think uh, with the uh, saga, he's at the top of the game. It's actually one of my favorite, if not my favorite comic of all time. Wow. No. Okay. Well, clearly, I'm a fan of the big two, the superhero books, the capes. Uh, it's always been my bag of tricks. And clearly, if you look into any of the things that I mentioned, the majority of them involve alternate realities or time travel. Uh, Wonski here leads more to the indie side, although I, your, your Flashpoint surprised me because it don't get much more pop than Flashpoint, dude. <laughs> you know. But but those things, But yeah. here's, here's what's unfair. Like Even though you say you're a fan of the capes and stuff, a lot of the books that you mentioned could be independent stories. Like you said, you said they're alternate realities. They're stuff that you don't really see in the comics, right? When yeah. you talk about injustice, it's something that's not seen. You'll and, never and, you'll never see that. In the, <laughs> indie, in the indie world, right? In the indie world, you constantly have that, right? Yeah. The superhero, The Boys, right? The TV show, The Boys, is based yeah. on a comic uh, from Ter- Garth Ennis. And, uh, you know, um, you see that all the time, but when, you, you don't see that level of violence. You don't see the, the, the superhero becoming the supervillain. You don't see that a lot, really, in yeah. the comics. So my problem is not... I love Superior... You know I love Superior Spider-Man as well. Yes. Um, but Which is then, not... That's not that's not an alternate reality, right. yeah. But but it could be, yeah. right? Um, For the record, you said Court of Owls. I don't like that storyline at all. Well, you know. Yeah. Go um, on. So I, I think that you're... I just... My stories, I like them a little different. And it seems like you do, too, though. Even though I like indie, you... You could say that you like the indie branch of Marvel and DC because you do not, you haven't really mentioned mainline stories. Well, growing up, I loved What If for Marvel. Sure. I, I, you know, I and I just, I, I like seeing crazy like, what the fuck moments. You know, it's kind of like why I like Titans mm-hmm. bec- and the Boys. You know, because you don't see that type of storytelling. You want to take a minute to in- talk about the Ultimates, Ultimatum. 
Ultimatum is one of my it's one of my favorite books. The Ultimate Universe is one of my favorite things because it's grounded in reality, but it is an alternate reality at the same time. With, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we know today is based on the Ultimate Universe, which is which is authored by Brian Bendis and Mike M Mark Miller. Sure. And, you know, and here's so here's my question. And Jeff Loeb destroyed it. Because I know that you really love of Netflix and Marvel, by the in, way. In the in the spirit of injustice and and all the Elseworld stories, would you say that Ultimatum, uh, especially the event, is your the best one that you've read? Out of uh, over everything, I just. <sighs> It's in there. I wouldn't say it's the best because Injustice is really good too. Earth Two is really good, you know. Uh, but also, you know, Deceased was actually really Deceased good. was really good. Deceased almost made my list, you know. Again, all three of those are Tom Taylor books. Yeah, Tom Taylor's good. Yes, um, good. like they're like they're all Tom Taylor books. Uh, but Jeff Loeb, like I think Ultimatum was the first time I saw them do crazy bat shit, crazy shit. Mm -hmm. You know, like the fact that Iron Man blew Wolverine away because Magneto manipulated Iron Man's armor to shoot and kill Wolverine to nothing. The fact that at the very end of the book, Cyclops gets his head blown off on Capitol Hill, you know, by a random person in the audience that's anti mutant. The fact that the blob is eating the wasp, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that multiple man climbs multiplies himself a hundred times over climbs on giant man and then is a suicide bomber like you just don't see that shit mm -hmm. in comics you know what i mean and i i, I loved it because it was so like jaw dropping but i hated it because they were destroying a comic series and a, and a comic world that that i love you should mention that ultimate all the ultimate universe it, there's permadeath oh yeah yeah when you're dead you're dead yeah same thing in, in, in Injustice. Right. Which you, and Earth 2, which is what makes you get... There's consequences. Sure. There's consequences, and you deal with those consequences. So when they kill someone off, you're like, what are they going to do now? But for some reason... That was the genius of Tom Taylor in Justice. He would kill characters, and you'd be like, you can't do that. Who's going to take their place? And he would take other characters in DC Universe so you wouldn't even give a fuck about and make them interesting, make them something that mattered. You know? It, like, it, it really well done. Really well done. Anyways, those are our top 10 comics of uh, the 2010s. 2020s, the roaring 20s. You guys better bring us some good shit. We're looking forward to it. Either way, uh, we hope you enjoyed our four-part series of the best of the 2010s. Once again, movies, music, TV, and comics. Uh, we didn't talk about video games because I don't play them, to be honest. And But one, just real quick, best video game of the decade. Witcher 3. Witcher 3. Are you looking forward to the show? Uh, yeah, that comes out on the same day as the Star Wars. Ah, well, yeah, anyways. So, there you go, guys. Uh, like, subscribe, share, comment, uh, Atomic Pop, uh, youtube.com forward slash Corker Comics. Uh, come to our three locations and come see us in person. We're here in Miami on 107th and 8th Street across from FIU. Uh, Coral Gables on Lejeune Road. And then, of course, uh, Pembroke Pines, Pines Boulevard, just east of University. Uh, for Tom Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy, I'm Steven. Later.